Hey, it's Charles Williams from inside the principal's office. Now, you know, us as leaders, we all have different strengths. Some of us are really good at data. Some of us are really good at the interpersonal skills and being able to communicate. And some of us, well, hey, we're really good at figuring out the minute details of the schedule and putting all those pieces together. But regardless of our strengths, we need to know what they are in order for us to be able to implement them and make us effective as leaders. I don't know about you, but I've done a little bit of work in this, tried to figure out what my strengths are, and I'm doing my very best. And so join me and my co-host, Michael McWilliams, as we talk about how to identify and put those strengths to good use. So join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time across all of School Rubric's social media accounts. I look forward to seeing you. Hello, this is Mac, one half of the Inside the Principal's Office team. I want you to join me and my co-host, Charles Williams, this Saturday on all of School Rubric social media platforms. We're going to discuss a very important topic. We're going to talk about leading with your strengths. Yeah, we work in environments, we live in environments where a lot of focus is put on the things we're not good at. We write plans of improvement. We identify using data to identify where we need to do work. Hmm, what do you think would happen in our schools if we identified and, and communicated what we're good at? Do you think that we could improve education if we use what we're already good at and leveraged our strengths? Hmm, we're gonna talk about identifying and leading with strengths. Gonna be a provocative conversation that you wanna be a part of. Join me, I wanna see your face. Well, not actually your face, but your name if you're on Facebook. Profile pic. I wanna see your face in the place this Saturday. Good morning and welcome to Inside the Principal's Office. My name is Michael McWilliams. I am a career principal in North Texas. This is my 20th year as an elementary school principal, and I am so excited that I get to share this space with you twice a month. And not just you, but with my, wait a minute, what's going on here? Where, where is everyone? Where is everyone? Charles? Oh, there you are. There's Charles. Hey, Charles. Hey, Zach. Hey, Bobby. We are so excited to be here inside the principal's office. Thank you guys for joining the dialogue. What a provocative conversation that we're going to have today about identifying our strengths and leading with it. We are in a society where we have a deficit mindset. We're always talking about what we're not good at and improving it. But today, we want to talk about what we do well and how we can use that to benefit kids learning. Mac, I, I just want to say I loved your intro video as I was watching it, you know, be, before we put it out into into the Twitterverse and all those other spaces. I was like, you, you're absolutely right. Right. We, we, we stem from this place about what we're always doing wrong. And so I cannot wait to jump into today's conversation and say, you know what? No, we're actually really, really good at a lot of things. That's right. Let's figure out how to lead with those. So thank you so much for that amazing introduction and, and bringing me on air. I was like, wait, what's going on here? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> uh, so hello, everyone. My name is Charles Williams, one half of this show, a principal in Chicago, the host of the Counter Narrative podcast. Um, and as we had said before, we can now say this officially, right? We are best-selling authors. So, so, so excited. We'll talk about the book in a little bit. Um, and of course, the founder of the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the CW Consulting. Just very excited to be here with everybody. And more importantly than the two of us, because you know you, you see Mac and I all the time, but I have two amazing guests that I was able to connect with this past summer and had a blast with here in Chicago at the NAESP conference. So we have Bobby and we have Zach. Um, so Bobby, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do in education, and then Zach, I'm going to turn it over to you. 
Sure. Thanks so much, Charles and Mac. It's so great to be here. Um, it was amazing connecting with Charles in person in Chicago this summer. So I'm Bobby French. I am an administrator out in Massachusetts. This is actually my 26th year in education. Wow. It is my 19th as an administrator. Um, so prior to being the student services administrator, I have also been an elementary principal, um, which is one of the most amazing things to be able to do. Um, and I'm also a member of the Teach Better team, and I do um, a lot of blogging, so you can find me kind of out there and all over Twitterverse. Yeah, so I'm just excited to be here this morning and talk strengths. Absolutely. And uh, Bobby, you are getting, you're like a Mac admin level there. Like Mac is like the resident admin. He's been doing this forever. So I think he's calling us old. <laughs> no, he's been doing this forever. That's what he was Experienced. saying. Right? Experienced. <laughs> like, since before there were books. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why I was in the background. Now I know. <laughs> so Zach, I'm going to take it over to you, buddy. Yeah. So I am Zach Korth. Um, apparently not. Um, old. Uh, I remember my second year as an administrator within Chicago Public Schools. Um, I have been in education for 11 years. Uh, I work at the incredible Jose de Diego Community Academy, uh, which is in Humboldt Park. Um, and fun fact is I started my assistant principal leadership journey the day before the state of Illinois closed um, their school. So I've been towing the line leading through this pandemic. And so um, I got to meet, obviously, Charles and Bobby at the NAESP conference. Um, and I do a lot of work uh, looking at restorative justice practices and the brain work behind that and repairing relationships. Absolutely. So I, I want to say thank you to our guests. Before we jump in, I, I also want to recognize everybody who's joining us this morning. I know Max said he wants to see your face in the place. So Carlos, Charla, John, everybody who's joining in, Thank you so much. If you are joining us this morning, please make sure that you stop by and you say hello. We want to know that you're here. And of course, during the conversation, we want to hear from you. Drop your questions, drop your thoughts, drop your answers. This is not a sit and get. We want to connect with you. Yeah, we also want to connect with others. So we want you to use your influence. Somebody say influence. We want you to use your influence. Get in the chat. Start tagging people you know that are educators. We're talking about a very important topic this morning, looking in the mirror and identifying and leading with your strengths. We live with a deficit model mindset. The majority of the people that we come in contact, they have this deficit mindset of let's identify what we're not doing well with and let's just work on that like forever. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I don't care if I had one-on-one -on -one tutorials with Michael Jordan. There's only so many dunks I'm gonna be able to do, right? We focus on things and we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to improve things that just aren't really gonna move. But what if we find out what we are good at and, and, and try to perfect those or perfect those so we can leverage that to balance out our uh, weaknesses or work areas. Uh, I hold a wonderful book in my hand inside the principal's office authored by that's when you're supposed to point your finger at yourself, Charles. Thank no other way. Go oh, to yourself, Charles. But but you, you also wrote it. Yeah, me too. And but this guy. And our too. friend, brother Robert Darnell. Okay, <laughs> y'all can tell we didn't have rehearsal today. Uh, it is a wonderful book. I want every educator should have. If you're not an educator, and you're watching. You know, an educator. Buy one for them. If they have a principal. This. It is National Principles Month, right? So, I mean, if you're talking about a gift for someone else, talking about a gift for yourself, you know, you want to make a little bit better, great opportunity for that. But also just, I want to take a moment for any of the principals watching, assistant principals watching, very happy National Principal Month to you. I don't know about you, but I, I, I think it's a conspiracy that we do it so early because it's like we're rushing, rushing, rushing. And then it's like, oh yeah, that was back in, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but very happy National Principal Month to all of the educational leaders out there. Um, and so very excited about, again, about having this conversation. So we are going to have our usual format um, we have two great questions coming in. I saw Charlie here uh, and she's watching. She presented one of the questions and we're going to have some conversations around each of those questions. And again, we would love to hear from you as we dive into those. And of course, we're going to close it out with one of my favorite sections, ideas that stick. So 
enough conversation about what we should be doing, let's start to have those conversations about our strengths and how we can lead with them. So let's jump into question number one from a good friend of ours, Christine Revesi Weinstein. Hi, I'm Christine Revesi Weinstein, an author, speaker, educational leader, and mental health advocate from Massachusetts. My question is, what are your top strengths and how does that impact the work you do each day. How can you leverage these strengths to maximize your time and impact on your campus? It's a great question. You know, just the other day, somebody posted um, a, a good friend, actually a, a guest from here, Lee, was posting about questions that you could ask uh, a potential candidate. And of course, I threw out the idea of like, well, what is something that we could help you grow in? But again, we were talking about that idea of a weakness, right? So I would love to hear your responses from Zach and Bobby. We're going to start off with you about what are your top strengths if you've been able to identify them and how you leverage them. So Zach, I'm going to come to you first. Yeah. So I had to, you know, had to think about this a little bit just because we always focus so much on like, what are we mm -hmm. not good at? Why, you know, we're always just pulling ourselves down either internally or externally. And so, you know, I pride myself on being a servant leader. I am anywhere and everywhere that I possibly can be. But I think on top of that is being that empath empathic leader is what is not said, right? And so when I'm having interactions with parents, when I'm having interactions with students and teachers, what is their body language? What is their eye contact? What are those things that are happening in our conversations? And then presence. Presence for me is being out at entry. Presence for me is being in the hallways and knowing my strengths as a middle school leader, being in the middle school hallways, being in the middle school entry. You know, that middle school is such a quirky um, grade level of six, seven, eight. Uh, and so just being there and just understanding what is going on and trying to be proactive. That's, I love that, right? This idea of being visible, being there. And you're absolutely right. With middle schoolers, like you, you almost have to be there. They are they're an interesting group of individuals, but I love them. There's a reason why I've worked with them every single year for the last 15 or so years. Uh, so, Bobby, I'm curious, what are some of your strengths and how do you leverage them? So first, I just need to give a shout out to my friend Christine there that did the opening. She's also from Massachusetts and uh, we got to meet at Codebreaker Camp. So I'm just excited for her question. So for me, it's really being that listening leader. Um, you know, I think a lot of things come from being able to listen. You know, we're so quick to want to either act or problem solve or get things done. So, you know, I think my biggest strength is that listening. And that means listening, you know, to teachers, to kids, to parents. Everyone's coming at any situation or problem from their perspective. And so sometimes you have to really listen and get that whole picture. And then the other component of that for me too is just my strength in building a school community. Um, so that people want to come to the school, like so having that climate where everybody wants to be there. So I started a new role this year as the student services administrator at the Miller Elementary School. And I've been visiting all of our third grade classrooms, we're a three, four, five building, just start to get to know the kids' names, you know, and for them to know me. And I do um I call it cafeteria duty in the morning, but where we kind of house all the kids before they go off to class, you know, in the first few weeks of school, like they didn't know who I was other than, you know, the person with the microphone. And now as I'm going into those classes to get to know the kids, um, now they're like, hey, good morning, Mrs. French, you know, or they'll come up to me and be like, what's my name? And, you know, so I think for me, it's creating that sense of community and where people want to be at the same time as also leveraging my strength as a listening leader to make positive change. You know, Bobby, you, you definitely touched on something there. Just yesterday at dismissal, one of the dads came up to me as I was saying goodbye to his kids. And he said, you know, it's amazing that you know all of these kids' names, right? It, it's, it's a little gesture, but it goes a long way. And so before I jump over to Mac, I just want to point out, we haven't said anything yet. Like, well, I'm really good at curriculum. I'm really good at that. Like, that hasn't been said. And we're still all amazing leaders and we're leading from these strengths. And I think it says a lot more about what schools can and should be than just curriculum and data. So, Mac, I am going to turn it over to you. 
Uh, we talk a lot about strengths on our uh, on our campus, uh, and I am actually a strengths coach uh, certified through the Gallup organization. So I have a I'm very aware of my strengths profile. Um, and my top five strengths are number one, belief, relator, input, responsibility, and achiever. And one of the things that I do um, with my staff every year is, you know, because you get new people, I share my strengths profile and I tell them uh, because of these strengths, this is how I do my job. This is how I approach my work. This is what you're going to hear me saying. This is what you're going to see me doing as a result of that. My top strength is belief. Um, I have some very, I'm very passionate about education and I have some very, uh, you know, some very firmly rooted beliefs about education. The way that I uh, use that daily in my practice is I feel that it is very important to uh, talk about what we believe. You know, every day on announcements, I talk about why we are here. And uh, I, in some, not a direct quote, but in some form, I am talking about mission every single day. And I, I tell kids that the, I either somewhere in my announcements, I either end or begin or I planted in the middle. I talk about, you know, today is a day of purpose and that at the end of the day, you will be one day closer to the thing that you want to be when you grow up. So that most definitely impacts our culture and the climate of our school. Um, and I, I lead with that top strength uh, every day, just belief. Why do we believe? You know, so when a kid um, comes to me and we need to reflect and think about a choice, I anchor it in what we believe and why we say that we're here, you know, is that helping you? How did that help you become one day closer? Did it move you forward or has it pushed you back? So th that's my top strength. Mac, I, I love that I continue to learn more about you. I mean, we've been doing this show for like 10 years now. And <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> Was this episode seven? No, I'm just <laughs> and, and I'm still learning more about you. So I had no idea that you, you, you know, that you were part of this, this Gallup, this, the Strengths Finder. Mm -hmm. So you know, and it's it's interesting because I know that this means that we are like like minded because I was going to talk about the very same things. And most of my strengths fall under the the area of, you know, like strategic. Right. Mm -hmm. I am that type of guy. I, I when I hear something, when somebody comes to me with something, when I see a problem, I try to break it down to its pieces and try to figure out like mm -hmm. how, what what's going on here? How does it work? Um, but I also believe in in challenging and pushing back against systems that are not working for right. our students for our people and that that's just who i am and i know that a lot of times when i stand in that place like right now when i came in and of course we were having those conversations around you know equitable for for race and things like that you know coming from the school that i'm in there was a people embraced that but now as we start to have conversations around gender and sexual identity i'm still the same person I'm pushing back on archaic ideas and standing firm in those places. And people are like, oh, wait a second. But the other day, my dean told me, he said, the, the something that I appreciate about you is the fact that you know who you are, you know where you stand, and you stand firm in that to make sure that everybody is okay. So even, you know, despite the shifting things happening, all the different personalities, like you remain consistent. And so again, I just want to point out not a single one of us talked about instruction or curriculum or developing lesson plans because our strengths are so much bigger than that. Our strengths are so much deeper than that. Those are things we do, right? Those are skills. Those are actions. But that is not who we are as people. And so I love the idea that we're starting to step into a conversation where we're like, hey, if we identify our strengths and live in those, maybe education is going to be a vastly different place. That is excellent, and uh, I, I made. I was in. I've been in a two-day workshop, and that was one of the things that I, that I pulled out in our conversations yesterday. Was we're sitting in the in the school board boardroom, uh, two days of training, and uh, leadership has everything to do with that self-aware principle. Uh, you can have the skill set that is needed. You can have the degrees. But if you think about leadership as a ladder, a leadership ladder, that first rung is self-awareness. And we have too many people. It's easy to skip the first rung and go to the second. Mm -hmm. But if you skip the first, you're you're not going to be as impactful as you need to be for kids. And that's what we need to, to realize, that we are who we are and the kids should be the benefactor of the things not only that we do, but the people that we are. That first rung is knowing who you are, 
what you possess uh, and uh, what what value you bring. We talked about interview uh, questions the other day instead of what can I coach you around? One of my favorite interview questions is this. If given an opportunity to come to our school, what value would you bring? Mm -hmm. What would you bring that would really make a difference? And it is amazing. You can tell who's self-aware and who is not because people are always prompted to, you know, we have that give them a weakness, but disguise it as a strength. You know, they, they you know, when you ask them just point blank, what are you good at and what are you going to help? How are you going to make help us move from good to great? It's kind of like, uh, yeah, uh, mm, I, I build relationships really, really good. You know, people are not poised to talk about what I do well. You know, we're afraid to be called arrogant, conceited. But I think that instead of being th that being conceited or arrogant, I think it's just being confident. We have to be confident and who we are. Uh, and with that, let's move into our second question. I'm enjoying our dialogue today. Let's move into our second question. We have Charla Nichols, all the way from Denton, Texas. Good morning, everybody, and happy Saturday. My name is Charla Nichols, and I'm a special education para here in Denton, Texas. I actually have a two-part question. The first part of my question is, what guiding principles have shaped the way that you lead your campus to success? The second part of my question is, what experiences have you had that have helped you find these principles in your leadership journey? Okay, this is good. Bobby, let's start with you. Well, I think it's interesting, Matt, because I was going to kind of jump on what you were saying previously, too, because it's like it's about the power of you. You know, like mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you talk about knowing yourself and, and having to do that. And so we're in the people business. Right. So, you know, I think that's why we're not talking about our strengths being around curriculum or data, because mm -hmm. we get to this leadership position because of our relationships with other people. And like I said, right. so kind of those guiding principles is, again, for me, it's that being able to listen. But I also think I strongly believe that everyone is doing the best they can with what they have say in that moment. So even our kids, you know, um, and our students, you know, they don't wake up in the morning and say, how am I gonna drive my teacher crazy today? Like right. that's, that's not their mission, you know? They're doing the best they can. And kind of like, for me, like um, one of, it was actually my second year as a principal and I heard all this ruckus outside the hallway and there's a third grade teacher like dragging a student down the hallway. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? So like I go out there and she's trying to take him to another room for, you know, a break or mm -hmm. whatever. And so the teacher is saying, you know, he was spitting all over his desk. He wouldn't stop spitting on his desk. So she's upset he's spitting. And like I said, being that listening leader, I just said to him, why were you spitting on your desk? It was dirty. I was trying to clean it. So, you know, I, I think for me that that guiding principle is really like kind of knowing where people are coming from and asking those right questions so that you can connect. So for me, it was like, well, this is how we clean our desk. Let's go get water and a paper towel. And then he was ready to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't need to be removed from class. You know, but I think sometimes we we don't ask the question of why, why mm -hmm. someone's doing something. That's with our staff too. So always coming at it from that inquisitive, listening point of view has really guided my leadership. That's great. Excellent. Zach? Sorry, I'm still stuck on the whole um, teacher dragging a student on the floor. I'm sorry, just get that out. Visual picture, I know. I was like, woo! Um, but I think along the same lines, right? And I think that's why this group is together today is like, what is our student's story? Exactly. Mm -hmm. What is, you know, we always talk about what is our leadership journey? What is our, you know, adult story? And how did we get where we are, are at right now? But I also think about what is our student story and what experiences mm -hmm. have they had and are experiencing because everything that they do, right? Behavior is a coded message, right? And how they respond, how they act, how they engage is all about what is going on in their in their brain, right? And so, you know, for me, it's always been about being authentic. For me, it's always been about being human and being real, right? Um, I used to think that wearing my Jordans on Fridays was not a big deal, but these kids get a kick mm -hmm. out of it, right? Because they're like, wait a minute, hold on. They're like, wait, wait, wait. And so every Friday now I like rotate my pairs of kicks and, you know, do this thing on Twitter, but we have these conversations and it builds those relationships. And then when you have all of that, you know, baggage of sorts or that information, 
you can have a conversation with the teacher to kind of get at the root cause of what's going on, not at the moment maybe, but then having those sit down conversations about this is why Bobby did this, or this is why Charles did this, right? Or here's a little more information with this. And just having that conversation about being, you know, we're all on this journey together and, and you need to understand some of these things about these kids. And that might give you a better lens on how to react. I, I love the fact that your students get a kick out of your kicks. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's strategic and a comedian. <laughs> oh, you know, for me, for me, my experience, um, you know, over the last, so this is my sixth year at my current school. And I, I share this story all the time, but I, I think it's critical for me to continue to share it because it is the reason why I am, you know, the leader that I am today. You know, when, when I came in, my school was slated to close and it, it had a, a long history of, of subpar performance. And, you know, when I came in, it was just ready to close. And, and I remember having a conversation at the board and saying, hey, give me an opportunity as a school leader. I had two years, two years to figure it out. And my very first year, I went full textbook leader, right? I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do. I, I you know, we, we revamped the curriculum. Let's buy new books. Let's figure out what programs we could bring in. Let's use all that title money, right? We were doing all the things. And then the scores came back and I was just like, yeah, like I know it. it wait, what do you mean they haven't changed? Because it's not about programs, it's about the people. And I know that's, you know, that has been said multiple times, but I lived it. I had to live it to experience that. And that summer we looked at our survey and we realized people did not want to be at the school. My students weren't happy. My teachers weren't happy. People didn't feel connected. They didn't feel safe. They didn't, they didn't want to be there. And once we figured that out, and once we figured out, well, how do we make Plato a place where people want to be? Mm-hmm. everything changed. And I remember having conversations with our department and they were asking, well, what did you do? What, what, like, what was your secret? And I was like, it's not a secret. We just loved on our people. Like Bobby was saying, we listened to people, mm-hmm. you know, like, like Zach was, I, I was present, right? We, we just had to make sure that our people knew that we were there for more than we're just going to sit down and teach at you every single right. day. We're going to create a space where you feel connected and loved and cared about. And not just our students, but we as leaders have to do the exact same thing for the right. staff in our building. Because if we don't take care of our people, they can't take care of their students and we're going to run into the ground. And so that are though that shaped the way I lead into leadership. Yeah, I think that uh, this is a rich dialogue this morning. Um, what shaped the way that I lead my campus is uh, I am not the person that I am today. And I think that I'm, I, I really relate to what Charles said when I first became a principal, um, cause you know, I'm really, really young and I've been a principal for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was 27 years old uh, when I got my first campus. I was one of the youngest people on the staff. So, you know, I did this. My first mistake was I allowed the position to define me. Mm-hmm. I grew a beard. I aged myself. I, I dressed older than I really was because I was trying to become this thing, trying to become this leader. Um, but but my leadership took off and effectiveness began to increase when I stopped letting the position define me and I began to define the position. And that goes along with that first rung on that leadership ladder is you have to know who you are, what you believe. You have to know what you're good at. And get this, you have to be okay with surrounding yourself with people who are smarter with you and smarter than you in some areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't always want to be the brightest candle on the birthday cake. No, there are some cakes where there needs to be candles that are brighter than I am. And I have to do this. I have to be uh, 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 secure enough in myself that I no longer want to change for anyone. Mm -hmm. And if I am going to live in that freedom where this is the leader I am, this is what I bring. If I am not going to change myself, then I begin to create an environment where I don't request other people to change. But I ask you to reflect and identify what value do you bring? And let's just all bring that value and Uh, In an area where I am weak, I find those people who are authentically themselves and whatever your title is, you know, I'm principal, you're a kindergarten teacher. But if you have an eye for schedules, 
making master schedules and making time work. I don't care what the nameplate on my office is. If I have to go down and teach your kindergartners while you come up and do some work with the AP, cool. Because at the end of the day, it's all about serving kids and the kids are the benefactors of our work. The kids are the benefactors of us owning who we are and just be that. Mm, mm, mm. Mac, I think you stole my idea that sticks. <laughs> <Did I? laughs> but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I, I, I don't know how else to say this. I, I just I want to continue to echo this idea that we just sat here and we've been speaking for over a half an hour now. Mm -hmm. And not once have we said anything about those, those minutia, those, those, those things that unfortunately take up most of our time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I just talked to my staff. We we had a rough start to the year. And I'm going to say this because I, I just think we all need to hear it. Like we talked about giving kids grace letting them figure out and get acclimated coming back into the classrooms, coming back into schools after 18 months or however long you were out in your respective places. But we need to do the same for ourselves. Like my teachers, my staff, we couldn't figure out why are we so tired? Why are we so frustrated? Why are we feeling the way we are? And it's like, no, it, this is to be expected as we're trying to get back into the routines, as we're trying to get back into the systems. And so we held community the other day and we we, we just laughed together. We cried together. And this is exactly what it was. It, it was not about all those little things that we do that take up all of our day. And I apologize to my staff for it, but it's like, how do we stand in our strengths? And that's what we talked about. What do we bring to the school and how do we support each other and making sure that we are mm -hmm. in those spaces so that way we have an amazing school year again, because it's not, it's never ever too late to salvage your school year. So I, I, I know that's not, maybe it's connected. I don't know, but I just- I think, that, I think that it is connected because one of the things that you said that that turned test scores around was loving on people and the culture in which you, you learn more from people that you like and places you enjoy being. Yeah. So I think that that is so, I think that what you said is so very powerful uh, and, and it is most definitely it most definitely, um, it most definitely connects. Um, think about the days that you come home and you're just absolutely drained. Anybody on this panel ever have a day where you're really drained? <laughs> now think about those days where, wow, the day just flew by. You look up and you're like, oh, one o'clock, I haven't even had lunch yet. Cause you're just going, going, going. If you really spend time in reflection, the days when you go home and you're just like, wow, that was the great day. Those are the days where you spent the majority of your time working in your strengths. Mm -hmm. The days that you're drained and you're like, oh, my God, it's just 932. <laughs> Those are the days where you have everything that's on your I'm not good at it. I don't like it list. That's all the stuff that you've had to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why it's important for us to to lead with our strengths and know the strengths of those around us, because everything you cannot delegate, but if you are really having a team approach, school is a team sport, those things that you're really, really not good at, somebody else is gonna be empowered and go home like, yes, I disaggregated data today. <laughs> those people are out there. <laughs> those people are out there. It's like, wow, I look at Google spreadsheets all day long and my eyes aren't crossed. I love, love, I loved it. Find those people that are good at the stuff that drives you crazy and let them do it. You're making their day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, Zach, I saw you pointing to yourself. So um, we just wrapped up some assessments. So I'm going to send you over my spreadsheet. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been an amazing conversation. And we get to come to one of my favorite parts here, which is our ideas that stick. So we don't want to just talk about ideas and theories and things like that. We want you to walk away with something that you could implement right away. And that is where Ideas That Stick came from. So we want to share that with you. And so we're gonna go through and we're each gonna share our own ideas on how we are going to leverage our top strength in order to be more productive. And as I mentioned earlier, I, Mac kind of took my idea here, but that's okay. We're just going to continue to say oh, it over and over again. It, it's because we're one and the same. That's That's yeah. the only reason why. So the I'm idea here dollars for it. <laughs> is to rely on the strengths of others. As, as Mac was saying, 
that is what we have to do to figure out how do we to, to, to lean into the strengths of those individuals around us so that we can maximize our own. It's not about being selfish. It's about being strategic. As we just talked about, if you, if you spend all your time doing things that you're not really good at, you're going to burn yourself out. But if you step back and you let somebody else do those, not only do you get to, to re-energize and fulfill your purpose to live in your passion, but you're doing the same thing for others. So it's far from being selfish because you're taking care of others around you and making sure that they don't burn out as well. So it is definitely you know, a, a mutual relationship there. So uh, Zach, I'm going to turn it over to you. What is your idea that sticks? Yeah, so I was just sharing that like, there's so many thoughts running through my head and whatnot. And so when I think about what are the stories of students and how do we leverage those, those stories with students and ensuring that, you know, that is happening. But I also think about like the biggest piece for me that I've had to understand is trusting the process, right? And so when we trust the process, wherever we are on that journey together, we truly are in the right place at the right time to figure out what is going on. And I think during this 18 months of the pandemic and as we continue moving forward in it, because it's not over, right? how are we making sure we are doing what we are supposed to do and not jumping the gun. Like what Bobby says, like making sure that we are listening and that, mm -hmm. you know, Charles, like you talked about, like breaking those things down and, and putting them into pieces and trying to figure out what the, the, the issues are. I think we are all at the same, you know, at the, at the specific place for a specific purpose. And I think that goes back to Max, like, what is our purpose, right? You might not get your purpose right now, but where are you going? Because you'll eventually get to your purpose. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Zach. Um, Bobby, what about you? So I really think it comes back to what I was saying before, like giving voice to our teachers and our students, you know, so we need to listen to what they have to say, because then we're going to find out what their strengths are so that we can use those within the school community. You know, again, Charles, I love what you said, like making school a place where everybody wants to be. And that goes to where we are now is we're, we're, you know, we're not quite recovering from a pandemic, but school looks differently this year. But the district that I am in, we're able to be in person most of the year last year, but it still looked very different from where we are now. And so being able to listen to teachers and, and students and, and what they need, or again, coming at it from their strengths, because anybody wants to come to school and have the day go by quickly because we're focusing on that. So kids being able to, you know, have music class again, or, you know, those things that that's really important to them. And as leaders listening to what they, they need and, and what they, how they want to approach school and making it a place for them to belong. You know, I think that's really important. All right. Thank you, Bobby. I, 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 I love when you mentioned like, right? In order for you to have a voice, in order for our people to have a voice, then we must listen. Otherwise, those voices aren't really giving them voice. So I, I just took a little nugget out of yours. And speaking of McNuggets, Mac, why don't you close us out? Come on, McNuggets. Do you have the sauce for these nuggets? Uh, communicate your strengths to others. I think that with strengths, there is a balcony and a basement. And a lot of times, our strengths, if we don't explain them, people only see the basement of our strengths. Like they'll look at Mac's beliefs and they'll say he's opinionated. It's he'll never change his mind. He'll, you know, but if we communicate and if we are aware of our balconies, we have to most definitely communicate who we are. And these are my strengths. And that is what it looks like, sounds like, feels like. Because of these strengths, that is what I am. You're going to see me doing these things, saying these things, and then address those. You know, I tell my staff, it's going to seem like uh, your opinions don't count, but just know that I lead with my belief. I also have input in my strengths profile, which means I collect a lot of data to make decisions. So all of my strengths are based on things that I've read, experiences that I've had. It's not that I won't change my mind. Just know that if you come with a good idea, you, you know, you have to give me some background and some context and, you know, really make a case for it. You just can't come in and say, you know, I think we should just wear shorts every Friday this year. You know, give me some data. Give me, you know, so we have to communicate to others our strengths, know our balconies and our basements of our strength, and then give others that same safe space like we're creating here for leaders 
everyone needs a safe space just to say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do well. And you get the best of me when fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Max, speaking of safe spaces, and I know as we as we start to close this conversation out, don't forget, those of you joining us this morning, we don't want to just have a conversation with you every other Saturday. That That is right. not what we're trying to do. We are we're definitely trying to goal. create a... No, no, not at all. And so we want you to join our Facebook group, um, you know, join us, communicate with us, share your ideas, share your thoughts, drop a question, because we are, again, creating that safe space for leaders to come together from around the world to connect. And maybe, just maybe, we could help each other lead with our strengths. So I want to just say thank you for everybody for being here. But before we go, I know we're going to talk just a little bit about the book. Mac, where can they find it? Oh, my goodness. If you're anywhere close to Denton, Texas, you can see me. <laughs> but if you're like the we just had an order for from Germany. Come mm -hmm, on here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh, you can go to Amazon. And you can purchase this book. You can make a small investment of nineteen ninety nine, uh, and you can have this book. It's forty weeks of uh, conversation like we are having uh, today. Uh, there are reflective questions, and I wish I had this resource when I started this administrative journey. I've been a principal twenty years. I was an AP two years before that, so twenty two years in administration. I wish I had these Mac nuggets. I wish I had this wisdom. And this is the thing that I say, we do learn from mistakes, but they don't have to be your own. Mm -hmm. Learn from our mistakes because a lot of the things that I wrote came from things that I learned that I was doing this uh, wrong and, or I was doing it, I won't say wrong, I was doing it to my level of knowledge. But as I grew, I, I began to refine my practice. So, you know, read that so you can find a, a, a higher entry point to the work that you do. Absolutely, Mac, right? It's not that, you know, I, I like telling people, it's not that I'm smarter than you. I've just made different mistakes than you. Right? That, that's that's all it is. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who, you know, don't, you know, you're, you're into those electronic books. I mean, mm -hmm. I like the feel and smell of paper, but, you know, there, there's people who like the Kindle versions. A Kindle version is coming. And we're can I say that? Can I say this? You said those that love the smell of books. I'm one of those people. You see all those books behind me. I just want to tell y'all. This is one of the best smelling books. If you like the smell of books, this is one of the best smelling books <laughs> that I've smelled in a very long time. I, I do believe they're going to try to market it uh, in sense by Dolce or something. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we're also new, working. Scent, new book scent. <laughs> this is what happens at the end of the episode, guys. While this, there's there's no structure, and he's probably like, guys, guys. Uh, but you're, doing too much. you're doing too much. <laughs> We're working on an audio version as well for those of you, you know, who want to listen during your commutes and everything else. So we definitely want to bring it to you in all different capacities. But again, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Zach, Bobby, thank you for joining us. All of our guests, thank you for being here. We had an amazing time. And I cannot wait to connect with all of you again soon. Right. We did have an amazing time. And I want to say this, uh, Zach and Bobby, thank you so much. Y'all are influential. We all have circles of influence. And all of you viewers out there on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all the social media platforms, you have influence. If you have learned something today, if you have been impacted by this environment that we are creating, I want to challenge you to use your influence. Tell someone about Inside the Principal's Office. Share this broadcast on your social media. We ask that you would leverage your strength and your influence to help us build a robust community of leaders because kids are going to be impacted and they're going to learn at high levels when we become self-aware and when we take advantage of spaces like this one. Absolutely. Zach, Bobby, all of our guests, have an amazing Saturday. And this is where it says wave to camera. Hey, wait, <laughs> hey, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you for watching School Rubric on YouTube. Make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe in order to stay looped in on all of our diverse collection of shows, interviews, panels, tutorials, and more from educators around the globe. And visit us at schoolrubric.com for even more great content, such as our online articles, Interact Magazine, featured podcasts, and more. Thank you. <laughs>